Welcome to Effective People Training Skills. Let's now learn about on-task skill coaching and see how that overlaps and works within the experiential learning cycle. On-task skill coaching works with eight steps for optimum performance. We'll look at each of those eight steps in much greater detail. Experiential learning works by linking existing knowledge to new knowledge, and that mirrors the natural learning patterns of our brains. Students are placed into training situations away from lots of stimulus because distractions can overwhelm the individual and block learning. All your students will come to you already equipped with lots of skills and knowledge, and of course don't forget talent. They're individuals who in their own environments are very competent. They're successful as parents, partners and professionals. Existing skills create neural pathways in our brains, and the more we use these skills, the stronger the neural pathway becomes. Learning involves creating new pathways. And when students experiment with new ideas or solve problems, then we rewire the brain. Aha! When we have aha moments, then our brain is changing and we're creating new cognitive maps. These new pathways need to be reinforced or they can fade away. So how do we help our students and our clients become competent? Well, the learning cycle helps rewire the brain and create new maps that are reinforced. Action helps cement neural pathways, and that helps us to facilitate our students becoming competent. On task skill coaching, there are eight steps in the process, and each step touches on one minimum component of the learning cycle. The first step is to open the session. Obviously, you already know the client. So you're going to introduce the session. What are you training? How are you training it? What is the goal? And why are you doing this? How is it relevant to the owner, to the pet owner, the student? Step number two, show the finished skill. Demonstrate the finished skill systematically. It's very motivating when they see the finished product. Think about those cooking shows we used to watch. The first thing they do is show you the yummy pie. Here, this is the finished product. Step three. This is a one-way demo where you work slowly and precisely through each fundamental component. This allows the student time to reflect and observe. Step four, the two-way demo. This time when you demo, you're going to slowly narrate what you're doing, including all the what's and why's. You're actually going to involve the student. This gives them a chance to watch, observe, reflect, and start to think about the actual process and what they're experiencing. Step five, the trainee now performs the task. And during the performance, you question them on the what and the why to encourage reflection. But first, take them through a thorough review of what happened when you did the second demo so they can begin to evaluate the task and what they're about to do. Step six, practice, practice, practice. And as they finish, acknowledge they've completed the task. Ask them what they experienced. Ask them what they were doing. Ask them how they feel. Ask them to analyze their overall experience. Ask them to talk to you about what surprised them. Step seven, knowledge transfer. Transfer comprises the application of skills and knowledge from the training environment to real life scenarios. So to effect that transfer, you need to talk to your students about what they've learned and how they can apply it to everyday situations. This of course will also facilitate practice. Step eight, homework. Only set homework based on skills you've coached students through and have seen them practice correctly. That way you know and they know that when you leave their homework and the session, they have the full competency to actually practice the skill correctly.